Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And today I actually have a really fun guest because this guy I was watching on Instagram for a long time now, uh, you know, for over a year and a half, maybe uh, close to that. And you've been posting really amazing things, a lot of Venom stuff and a lot of other character stuff. And we're going to talk all about that today. But you're kind of interested in a world that I have a very vague knowledge of and I have a very little interest in but you are very very interested in stuff like variant covers and and great artwork on those variant covers and you collect them and you grade them and I think that's a really interesting topic to talk about so and you also have a great YouTube channel and we're gonna get to that here in a second so everyone please welcome Ryan Ryan thank you so much for being on the show hey thank you so much for having me it's been it's honestly uh an honor to be here and my first podcast, so I'm, I'm really excited for this. Hey, all right, sweet. Well, uh, it's it means a lot to have you on here too, and I've been watching your YouTube channel and I check out your Instagram posts, and you're a really awesome guy. So, where can people find you? What what is the you know the information for your Instagram and for your on your YouTube? Yeah, uh, I try to make it as simple as possible. So at Ryan Comic Guy for Instagram, uh, Ryan Comic Guy for YouTube, or RyanComicGuy.com. Oh, awesome. You can check out his website, and I will put links to all three of those down below, so that way you guys are just a click away from checking out some amazing content that this guy puts out there. And uh, and Ryan, I first off, I um, you know, it's clear when I look at people on Instagram, especially, like there's a lot of ca- accounts out there that they randomly throw up pictures and they randomly post stuff. I'm kind of, I feel like I'm kind of one of them. Like I'm kind of all over the place to a degree. And uh, and people sometimes give me guff about it and that's fine. I, I appreciate the feedback. But they're like, hey, you're Venom vlog. Why, why are you posting about Transformers? And I'm like, well, I like Transformers too. But uh, but you have this very, uh, you know, focus, like this this focus that I have, I'm always envious of when people have it. And uh, it, uh, it, it's on comic books, but and comic book art specifically, and I want to kind of dive into that. What uh, before we get there, though, I want to know what kind of drew you into comics, and what uh, what were some of the earlier comics that you collected that that pulled you in? You know, uh, that's a great question. So, uh, you know, as a kid, all of us we all love comic books and and watching them on you know animation or movies. Uh, where I grew up, for the most part, was in a small town where I didn't have a comic book store that I could go to or. If I did, it was it was too far. So collecting comics was not really available to me as as a kid. I remember uh, at an antique store when uh, when I was a kid that they had some just you know thrown about comics. And to this day, I actually had found them recently. Uh, I still have them, and I had used um, uh, trading cards like baseball trading card sleeves, where it's like a three by three by three. Mm-hmm. And I had created my own. Uh, bag and board if you will before I even knew what that was I just wanted to preserve them but uh, I had some Venom comics in there as well but the the most recent impetus to get me back into comics was really Joker and I know that if you follow me on Instagram or you see my Instagram it's, it's primarily Venom um, and I love Venom as well but the character that got me into comics was was Joker I am a huge fan of Joker I'm a huge fan of philosophy and I find him to be a very philosophical based character that you can really dig out some of these philosophical ideologies and iterations through the different the different way that the character has been manifested through the years. Um, and I just wanted to collect a couple of comic books. I was going to put them on a wall on my wall, and uh, I told my wife, and she's like, "Yeah, go ahead and get some." And unfortunately, I have a very uh, addictive personality in a sense where once I sink my teeth into something, I, I get very uh, you know, very consumed by it, and it just one thing led to another, and here we are years later, and I have uh, way more comics than my wife would have ever hoped I would have. <laughs> I, that's amazing. I uh, I've heard that story a thousand times, and it it always makes me smile because it's like, yeah, you you don't really know when you tell someone, yeah, you can you can have that pet snowflake, that's okay, and you don't realize that it's actually going to turn into an avalanche. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's really awesome. Uh, so. You know, so Joker's a great character. Actually, while I was doing Venom Vlog, I was doing a separate show about Joker, but because of the new COPPA guidelines and stuff, I got afraid that it would be rated too mature, so I actually deleted those episodes. But I, too, I'm not actually a big Joker fan, but the you're right about the psychology and the philosophy of the guy. I feel like he's any psychologist's 
worst nightmare and and you know and probably uh you know b uh, best wet dream in a way <laughs> they're like this guy could be either he's he's interesting to dissect as a writer um as an artist he's very awesome and interesting to interpret uh you know from visual style and there's as we've seen many different versions of joker so what is one of your favorite versions or one or two of your favorite versions of joker that you really like exploring or just visually just find very captivating oh ah, great question um I'd have to say the most terrifying or the most uh, haunting version of the Joker that that sticks with me uh, to the to this day it has to be Grant Morrison's uh, Arkham Asylum. I think that iteration, the art from Dave McKean was was I read it and I, I actually was disturbed, right? Like I felt like <laughs> reading the words matched with his art and the style of the art was. Um, it, it was pretty haunting, and, and the the uh, the topic was very dark, and it was it was very raw and real. So as far as you know, whether or not it's my favorite, I don't I don't know if it was my favorite, but it's definitely the one that has been the most emotionally charging for me to read and to experience. Um, then you have your Neil Adams iconic uh, styling. Um, you know, I I just love. I guess there's not necessarily a specific iteration because every iteration I feel brings another aspect to the character. And what's really cool is that the Joker in one medium is not the Joker in another medium. And that's actually something that it's actually a video I'm, I'm working on. And um, I actually did an article on my website that I, I mentioned earlier that I feel like the Joker, whoever is writing him, is able to create a snapshot and capture the the zeitgeist of the time and if you look at it you can see in the 80s with grant morrison and dave mckean that it's a very raw sexual energy very dark and and the 80s you had that exploration of of sexuality you have punk rock you have you're allowing these darker themes in society kind of be accepted from you know that was the 70s before was like the the hippie movement and then you have 2008 Heath Ledger Joker where it's about like the Occupy Wall Street. It's about the financial crime for going through the recession. And then you have uh, Joaquin Phoenix's iteration of Joker where it's about mental health and where we are in society about addressing mental health issues and, and, and allowing that to be um, more of a forefront of a, of a conversation that otherwise hasn't been allowed. And so that to me is each each Joker is one is a favorite of mine for a different reason and for a different exploration that wasn't really explored prior to. Oh man, I I love that breakdown. That is very interesting because you're right. It's a uh, each Joker that we've seen at least in other media is uh, has been a reflection of the time, but also yes, in the comics too, it has been a reflection of those time periods, and that's speaks to the longevity obviously we're at the 80th anniversary of joker right now and uh and so to keep a character around for 80 years you do have to do that and with joker like batman they find new ways to try to make him relevant they make him younger they do they give him new tech or whatever um but with joker they have to really explore the zeitgeist and the and the, the the mental uh, kind of a reflection of society and what humanity's feeling and what the lowest you know people who feel like they're at the bottom feel and they kind of put that spin on it into the Joker, but adding on all this other, you know, uh, terrifying things sometimes. I think that's a that's a great answer, actually. <laughs> like you, you really do love the character, and uh, and that's that's fantastic. Well, I look forward to it. You guys, make sure uh, when he posts this video up, uh, please make sure you go check it out. Uh, and if you're watching later on, like some, maybe you found this episode a year from now, uh, when that episode comes out, I will add it to a pinned comment in the uh, the comments down below, so that you have a link right to this just history of Joker episode he's making. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Of course, dude. So. Let's uh let's shift gears a little bit. So like you like I said, you told us how you got into comics. You told us that Joker kind of pulled you back in in recent years. And the reason you don't post a lot of Joker art, I'm assuming, is because there's like Marvel does variant covers like crazy, and it's not like DC doesn't. But I I, I think I'm with you where I don't see like a ton of Joker stuff. Like correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they did like a Joker month on all the covers, whereas like Venom will get a Venomized month and a Carnageized month and they'll get all these things. So you have plenty of content to create from that on your Instagram. Is it just from lack of, uh, you know, exposure from DC for Joker? Yeah, you know, that's that's a great question. Um, so I think there's a, a few different prompts for that. So 
Uh, first, yeah, they don't do like a Venomized Month or like in 2012 when they had the Venom Variant Month. Uh, but they do with these big anniversary editions uh, or milestone years for like Joker, for example. Most recently, they did um, the 75th anniversary uh, covers for Joker. So they were variant covers for uh, for Joker across all the different titles. You had uh, New Suicide Squad, you had Aquaman, you had, you know, all of them. And they were all cover price, so it's not like they were ratioed or, or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think Joker is one that, you know, like I, I have a, uh, a Detective Comics 80 jock that was not necessarily a, uh, it wasn't a, a ratio variant or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it's, just, it's tough for DC, right? Because with Joker, he is their, their cash cow, but they can't, they can't oversaturate. And so they create, they, they have to cycle through the different rogues gallery of Bane and Catwoman and Penguin and Riddler and, and you know, Two-Face and, you know, Mr. Freeze and all these other characters. So Joker kind of gets these, these hits, uh, you know, in between. And that definitely is a pump up. Like one of my favorite more recent covers is, um, is the Jim Lee Justice League number eight, I believe it was. And they had um, a regular cover variant it was a regular price variant that was a color version and then they had a one in 100 pencil sketch variant that uh that came out as well and i grabbed both and it was you know for me with variants it's um it's yeah variants it's tough but like as far as why i don't post it as much and trust me i have a lot of joker that i'd love to post more of Mm -hmm. um i just don't see i don't if you look and, and you know if you and hopefully by the time you're watching this things have changed on my my uh, my feed and, and my uh, my my viewership base, but if you look at what I post Venom wise, it'll get probably double or triple or maybe even quadruple the likes that sometimes my Joker covers get. And I think I don't know if the people I don't know if uh, Venom just has a much better Instagram audience than Joker collectors. Um, but yeah, I'll look at it. I'll post a, a Joker cover that's a favorite of mine. It'll get seventy five likes. And then I'll post a, a Venom cover and it'll get over 200. And uh, it, there's just this huge discrepancy. And so I just kind of, I try and focus and curtail my content to what my, uh, my, my followers respond to. And so that's, that's kind of why you see a lot more Venom than you do Joker, even though if you were to come into my, my collectible room, uh, Joker is everywhere in here. <laughs> that, you know, it's funny that you say that because uh, before I created the Venom vlog, I started. I tried to get a, a a Superman show off the ground. I tried to get a, a pure DC show off the ground, and I tried to do an X Men show, and none of them garnered any re- any views. And then the second I made the first Venom vlog, it was like triple the amount of views that any other video I had made got. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, weird. And then so I was like, well, let's you know, a month later, I was like, let's do a second episode, then a third episode, and then by the time I got to episode ten of Venom vlog, I noticed I went up like fifty subscribers. And then I also had like a bunch, you know, a lot more consistent views on my channel. And that blew me away. I was like, man, all these years I tried all these different things, but Venom was the thing that clicked. And uh, and I think, you know, that's what made me realize when that movie came out. Like, that's why I was like, all right, we're going to keep going with this show because it seems like I'm making content. It seems like you're making content for an audience that's hungry for it that we may be underestimated. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, I'm a huge Ninja Turtle fan as well. Nice. And um, and Moon Knight, but uh, Moon Knight will get will get good likes sometimes. But Ninja Turtles, I can't post any of that because it it'll get honestly a third of, of anything else I I would post. And I don't know if that's a an age gap where maybe Ninja Turtle collectors are a little bit older, so they're not really as as uh, social on on Instagram. But yeah, I'll tell you, man, it is, it's nine day and, uh, on what I post. Yeah. And it's, and it's smart to do that. I feel like someone, I've had that conversation before where it's like, you know, someone's like, oh, why, why lean into the audience? And I go, well, it's kind of the path of least resistance. If that's the thing that's going to draw attention to you, then you nurture and build that audience. And then later on you can pepper in the other stuff you want to do. Um, and, Absolutely. You I know, mean, people are giving you their time. You want to give them something that... <laughs> Is worth it because if not, they're gonna they're gonna unfollow or follow someone else and pay less attention to you. And it's not like I'm putting out content I don't care about anyways, like you did with Venom Vlog. It's it's stuff I love anyway. So it's like, hey, you like this? All right, let's keep doing that. There's there's no there's no harm in it. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I think I think you know Venom just has like Spawn. You know, that's another thing is I've noticed that with Spawn and Venom, the audience retention or desire is rabid. Yeah, um, collectors are rabid, and uh, it, it's it's pretty fascinating to see. And that's kind of my approach to comics is that you know people that like to kind of just collect anything or anything like any character they're not really each character has its own base that has its own unique collecting style and desire and that's something that's been really interesting to to learn more about and see as i've gotten further into my collecting yeah uh, yeah i noticed that and i hear that a lot on your channel so i want to talk about that for a second because for those of you out there who haven't seen ryan comic guy's channel like please do click on the link in the description box because he not only does he put out just great solo content, he does great giveaways a lot of times, which is really awesome of him. And uh, he also um, he also has really great interviews. Like you bring on people that I've either never heard of, but then I see their stuff and I go, oh, I do actually know who that is. Or um, or they're just very active on social media, but they're not like a big name. Or sometimes they are, you know, they have a name and they have a big following. And I, I'm kind of curious what, uh, you know, I guess let's start with, you post pictures on your Instagram. For those who don't know and haven't checked it out yet, please go do it. Uh, he'll post pictures of variant covers um, and sketch covers and CGC covers. And so why why the focus on that? And how did that lead you to reaching out to some of the artists that do these variants and, and covers and uh, and start interviewing them on a YouTube show? Uh, yeah, great question. So why are you asking, like, uh, for the first part, like, what – why I chose to post what I do on my on my feed? Yeah, kind of like what you know. Obviously, it, it's it's. I know the obvious answer is you're passionate for it and you love the the art and the covers. But I'm kind of curious. Like, there's a lot of other people that they pick what they're going to post online, and I'm I just guess I was wondering if there was another element there that kind of drew you to posting the the CGC and variant covers. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah, it's a great question. Um, yeah, I, th- I know people like to post things and, um, you know, share, but for me, yeah, there's a couple different reasons why I chose to do it. So before this, actually, I was I was not on social media for probably a good couple of years. Um, not, I didn't have a, a personal Instagram or any sort of social media otherwise because I just felt that sometimes social media can become very inauthentic and it can be very um, jealousy-based or greed-based where people are not really showcasing their their true life but the life that they want you to view it as and it's not and it's from an angle of uh trying to make it look better than it is and so i i just felt this inauthenticity and i i I just had to step away for a while um so when i got back into this and i just was starting to collect and and having a, a lot more i was like man these are all really cool but it's not really it's awesome that i have them but what's really fun is to show them to other people to say like, hey, check out these covers, um, you know. And also, another aspect I find very fascinating is why do we buy them? Like, why why did I buy this comic book? Like, what you know, you're scrolling through people's feeds and you see them post a certain book, and you're like, well, what's so what's so great about this book? You know, because a lot of times they just put small captions like, oh, multiple comic Monday, and it's just a, a comic book. And you're like, all right, well, what, what's the point of this? And so that's why I started this also on my YouTube uh, channel, a series called Why I Bought, where I do a, a much deeper analysis on why I bought. So, um, because, yeah, you see these books and you're like, well, wh- why is this book worth 100 bucks? Why is this book worth 50? You know, whatever the, whatever the value is. Sometimes it's not even worth anything. Sometimes it's just a really cool cover that I really like and I, and I want to get it and I explain why or if it's the hardest. Um, but that's why I wanted to post them. I mean, and here's another thing too: is you know, kind of going into the variant aspect of things. It's a double-edged sword because with variants comes a perceived or a real rarity. And what makes it cool is that there aren't many of them. But then also, people don't know about it because it is rare, right? And right. so, you know, some people probably would love to know about this conflict that exists, but it's just you don't see it. And so, if you can't see it you can't know what is out there. And so that's another thing I want to do is it's just show people my collection. And it's also just a fun way for me to look at my collection as well. You know, instead of just having them in my room, you know, post them, see them, be, have, have a, have an active collecting style. 
Yeah, and and you you do it. You have some great stuff, and it's like you and I think there's a guy named Old Man Venom that I think you talked yeah. to. Um, a lot of you guys, they, you guys post really cool stuff, really great artwork, and that's what I love is like um, is that you have that level, that appreciation of artwork. Because me, like I'm a story guy. Like I I do like good artwork and I appreciate it, but I'm always like a story and character guy. So I will sometimes overlook art that doesn't appeal to me if I like the story, and so it's really nice talking to someone who's. The, oh, I'm not saying you don't like story too, but you really seem to gravitate to the visuals. And what that led to was some of these artists, like I said, that do these covers or these other collectors like Old Man Venom, you've actually reached out to them and had them on your show. And I'm just kind of wondering, what are some of the things you've learned by having some of these guests uh, give you their point of view on your show? Yeah, uh, fantastic question. Um, yeah, going going more towards like the, the people I've had on my show or on my channel. And a lot of that too is because I know that I have my my opinions, my beliefs, my even things that are based in fact and, and things like things of that nature. But what I also realized is that uh, people don't want to hear me talk all the time, and people don't want to. You know, I'm I'm one person, I'm one opinion. But what's really cool is talking to other people in the community, the artists that are up and coming, the artists that are creating these um like Gorkum Demir who's an amazing amazing uh Venom artist and just artists in general he's amassed an amazing a huge following on on social media but he just loves to do commissions and uh or Old Man Venom who's been uh in the game for years and years and has read anything related to symbiotes and just is a wealth of knowledge or um you know up and coming artists because I think we need to hear more from other members in the community uh, that I feel when you watch some other channels that have a larger following, they they don't, you don't really see people reaching out to the other members of the community. Like you reaching out to me is is incredibly kind of you, um, but it's, you're, you're reaching out to other members of the community to discuss about things in the community. You're not just talking, you're not just talking at people. You know, when I have people on my show, it's because I want to talk to them. I want to, I like to do them live so that other people can join in and ask questions because a lot of times people think other people are uh, not easily approachable because sometimes social media creates this wall of like, ooh, I'm, I don't know if they are open to receiving messages from me or things like that nature. So I, I want to create a very open uh, dialogue with the members of the community because there's so many other people out there that, that matter way more than I do. I don't really matter. I'm just trying to create a platform that is able to ask questions that I have and what other people may have as well. Well, I'm going to disagree with you on you mattering. I think you're an awesome dude and that you do matter a ton. And I, I love your content. You. You're welcome, man. I love your content. You're just a really nice guy. Like I said, there was even, I think you, I was feeling sick. I was, I can't remember when it was. And you were like, hey, man, did you see my latest episode? I'm like, oh, I'm like two behind. I'll catch up. And so I was laying in bed and I'm watching. You're like, I, I hear my name in it. And I go, whoa, wait, I won a contest. And I was like, oh, that's super sweet. And it was like a spawn cover and something else. And I was like, you know what, dude? I go, I'm about to move to Florida. I go, I'd rather that go to a really, you know, big fan. Not that I'm not a big fan, but. I, you know, that's how I like the other day I was at a comic store and they offered me this one in 3000, um, uh, variant. It was like a retailer summit variant for Venom 25. And they were like, yeah, yeah. yeah they were like, it's one, each store gets one as long as we went to the retail summit. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really collect variant covers. I'm sorry. And the guy's like, oh, well, you're my Venom guy. I thought I'd give you a first crack at it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a page out of Ryan's book. I'm going to buy this thing and I'm going to do a giveaway. Uh, oh. and, uh, and I, and you actually completely inspired that. So I'm like, well, in this way I can, I can contribute to the store by, you know, paying for something from them and, and keeping, you know, giving them some business today. And then I can now have a giveaway for, you know, something coming up. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet, but, um, but I'm going to start planning that out probably next week. Although if you're listening to this episode, it's probably already happened. <laughs> so, cause we're, we're, we're speaking to the future <laughs> and the past. Yes. We're recording this pretty, pretty far in the future, uh, pretty far in the past, but, um, but so you're, so you know, you have actually inspired me. I think you do matter. And I think everyone in this community matters. And you're right. I see that too. I see a lot of people who cover movie news and cover, um, you know, and, and cover comic book news and stuff like that. And they, sure, sometimes they have their friends on, but I don't feel like they actually have people from the, their community on. And, and there's a big difference. And so um, I've been wanting to do that. I think since when I started Venom Vlog, I wanted to do that as early as episode like 100. 
but I couldn't figure out how and I didn't have the setup or, or you know, really the knowledge of, of tech stuff and I was still learning. And so, um, so this system I have now isn't like a, a great system, but at least it's something and I can build from here because I was, I'm like 500 episodes of Venom Vlog. I'm sick of talking, <laughs> you know, like, like that's a lot. I, I, yeah, that's a, that's Good a lot. You. And we still got a lot more to go. So I'm like, yeah, I need some, I need another outlet where people can hear other people like, like yourself. So in saying that, you know, you had had some great interviews. I love the Gorkin interview. Uh, his art is so amazing and, and just so beautiful and, and disturbing, but also just, I, it's, it's, it's so good. I love it. And, and so speaking of Venom now, like, what are some of the things you like about the character and do you have a favorite symbiote? Oh yeah. Uh, okay. So very similarly to, uh, to Joker actually. So there, there are some parallels between Joker and Venom for me at least. And it, uh, and maybe not necessarily from a philosophical or ideological perspective for Venom, uh, because Venom is, or Eddie is, uh, is a pretty straightforward guy who's become more nuanced as the years have gone on. Um, I think Donnie Cates and, and Ryan Stegman have done a fantastic, fantastic job of uh, layering him and creating these different layers of uh, emotional or um, just his his personality. But what drew me to Venom, I think you know I'm a kid of the the 80s and 90s, and Venom was just always that that really cool bag like. Looking at my uh, comic books that I got from the antique store, one of them is the uh, is a Venom comic, and so I've always been drawn to the character. I think if you look at characters that I, I talk about in general, they're going to be antiheroes uh, by and large. Joker is, you know, a villain, but uh, I, I'm very drawn to antiheroes who have a. Uh, it's not too. It's not black and white. It, it's a. It's a very gray area where you don't quite know. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're bad. And, uh, I, I find that to be really fun with Eddie, um, but why? You know, so going back to the parallels with Joker, there are so many different ways to draw Venom, and I find that to be fascinating. It, if you if you told if you told an artist to draw Venom, you probably wouldn't get the same way that you that someone else would draw him. Uh, people like him to be more uh, human based. Some people like him to be more monster based, and you've kind of seen this evolution in how he's been stylized um you know my personal favorite uh venom style is always going to be todd mcfarlane uh, my my belief is that venom the symbiote is an enhancement it's a uh it it, it persona it amplifies the person that is the host rather so when you saw black suit uh peter parker or you know spider-man he wasn't monstrous he it was basically just changed the, the suit color, right? But it had the different enhanced, uh, you know, abilities. And then same thing when when Todd created Venom, the symbiote just made Eddie just a little bit bigger, a little bit meaner, but you could still see that it, that humanistic quality, that anthropomorphic aspect of him. And uh, that's why I'm actually a huge, huge fan of Stegman's drawing of Venom because he brings that back. He brings, like, Venom... Uh, looks very much like a like a human whereas sometimes you can see on different covers and things like nature it, it, he, he looks more monstrous the, sometimes the tongue is just it's just like barely it's like almost to the floor right like it, <laughs> it, it, they yeah. kind of take it to extremes yeah. um but as far as favorite symbiote i'm, I'm just a, i'm a classic fan so I, I love i love venom um you know it's the same symbiote but agent venom is a huge uh is a huge character that i really enjoy um, Carnage, if you want to find a Joker parallel as far as how a character is uh, from a mental standpoint, I think Carnage or Cletus is one that I really enjoy as well from that, that nihilistic chaos, uh, just kill everything kind of component. But um, I'm very interested to see where they take Dylan. I think Dylan's going to be a very cool one to, to kind of see if, if it doesn't get dragged out too much longer. Sleeper. Uh, has had to grow on me a little bit from a stylized uh, standpoint, but yeah, I think I, you know if that answered your question. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, isn't it funny that because um, I'm kind of drawn to antiheroes too, and a lot of the antiheroes I know um, 
you say the world's not black and white to them, but yet they wear black and white, like Punisher and Venom, uh, are, are 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 physically black and white, uh, but they they exist in the gray, which is amazing. Um, and I'm assuming I'm assuming you have uh, the issue where Cletus Cassidy, Carnage, and a, a Joker team up, Batman Super, uh, Batman Spider Man. Yes, I do. I don't have it graded, uh, just because for me, I think, oh man. I thought about. I've even thought about this recently. It would have been so cool to have a reprint where instead of Batman and Superman, it was on the on the cover. You had one with Joker and uh, and Carnage. But yeah, I, I love that issue. And and uh, yeah, I think it would have been a really cool cover to have both of them on there uh, together. Because otherwise, it, seeing Batman and Spider-Man doesn't evoke the same emotions if you had those two on there. That's true. Maybe that's something you can do one day. Is uh, is commission an artist. To do a, a a pretend cover variant cover for that issue and put Joker and Carnage on it for you. Oh, absolutely! Oh, I, I would love that. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, you know it's it's funny. Like Eddie Brock to me is uh you know it's, it's kind of same. I mean I've explained it a million times on my channel of what I think about him, and what I love about him. Um, but it's great to hear kind of what draws you in and that you have that uh, that version of the Todd version. You know, like where it's it's an enhancement like you said it's like okay it's an extra layer of epidermis in a way but it, it enhances what's already there so it doesn't make them like you know 10 feet tall it, you know um it doesn't yeah. you know it doesn't some some people draw them with toes some people don't um there's like and i didn't realize that was such a a, a topic of contention between fans because some fans are like i love the toes and other fans are like i hate the toes uh and it's like it's like all right like, that's cool me personally my favorite venom is from the madness where he has all the little heads coming off of him um, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why Kelly Jones. I love Kelly's art, and that that book has always been like my my go to look for Venom is just all these little heads on them. Um, See, but... everyone everyone has a different version of them, <laughs> and that's what's so cool. Like, right. if I said who's your favorite version of Joker or Venom, someone has a different iteration. But when you talk about other characters, they're they are drawn very similarly. Some, I mean, the the only difference is maybe the style in which the artist themselves draws, but there's no real alteration of the character itself. Right. Yeah, the, with Joker, for me, like like I said, I've never been a, a big fan of the character until recent years. I've kind of, uh, you know, liked him a lot more. And I, there was an issue of Detective Comics that I think Paul Dini wrote, and I want to say Don Kramer drew it. And it's from maybe like eight or nine years ago, right before the New 52. And it has a uh, Joker... He, he kidnaps Tim Drake and he ties him up in the passenger seat with a bunch of Christmas lights. Like he tra straps him down uh, with a bunch. Oh, yeah. And then he's, and he's, and they're driving around on Christmas Eve and Joker's just running over innocent people uh, with, with Tim Drake strapped to the chair next to him, helpless to stop it. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's a terrifying dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, he is definitely a nihilist, like <laughs> yeah. just chaos. Sure is. So like, so um, we obviously like yeah that's a you know great elements of these characters. Uh, where do you see like and what's kind of your hope with your with your content? Like I I see you growing. I see you talking to new people and, and reaching out to people. And you're fantastic at it. I think you're a great guy. You're you're always very respectful, very nice to people. When you have guests on, you are you are very engaging with them, which is something I I sometimes I see interviews with people and it's just like reads question, gets answer, moves on. And you're very much the opposite of that. And I, I like that because it makes it easier for me, someone like me, to listen to it. And, uh, and it, it pulls me in more and makes me connect with you and your guests more. So where are you hoping? Like any dream guests you would hope to have one day on your show, or any dream artists, or or or, or very covers or or something that you know you would love to complete your you know that would be like a the unicorn of your collection your great white buffalo oh okay yes well first thank you so much for the very kind and generous words it, it, it means a lot because i uh i never want to ask someone their opinion of me but when you, you mention those things it, it's uh it, it's 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 one of those things where it's hard to hear because it's hard sometimes to accept compliments, but it means a lot to me that uh, that you perceive me that way because that's the way I, I want to be perceived. And I think the way that the community is as a whole, and I want to try and just kind of um, maybe spread that a little bit more. I try and make sure like I I'm not trying to be like Mr. Rogers, you know. I'm not trying to be like <laughs> the Sesame Street of the community where it's just a hundred percent pure happiness but i do want to make sure i bring in authenticity and one that's a, a positive aspect i feel like 
you know, the world has so much negativity that, you know, when we're on social media, when we're watching these videos, we're not watching it for more drama. We're watching it to learn, to escape, to, to make ourselves better. Because if we're not making ourselves better, then why are we watching? What the hell is the point? Right. Um, and that's my hope. I think that kind of, that kind of dovetails into my, my hope is to just create content that I would want to watch that I think would help make me a smarter or a better collector um, because that's that's what this is about. That's why I love watching videos from other creators or scrolling through social media to learn about covers I didn't know about, to learn about characters I didn't know about. Um, you know, like I I got turned on to Moon Knight because other people in the community. You know, I, I didn't I didn't grow up with Moon Knight. Um, and as far as who I'd love to have on my show, I mean, we're going like unicorns. And of course, with a, being a, a huge Venom guy and, and everything else, it's got to be Tom McFarlane. But um, I think that's a pipe dream for sure. Uh, <laughs> another one would have to be Bill Sienkiewicz. Um He probably, if we're talking about artists, just from an artistic standpoint, Sienkiewicz is, is probably my, my favorite artist, hands down. Um, I'm, and what kind of also got me into comics was I'm a huge fan of art. I'm a huge fan of Basquiat, um, mm-hmm. you know, his artwork from, from the 80s prior to his his untimely death. Right. Uh, Banksy is a very new age artist that I love because he has a very social um, component to it. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it, it's not artistically challenging, but it's very socially uh, engaging conceptually. Um, but Sienkiewicz to me is just I love his abstract art, and I think that that's and, and watching him go from Moon Knight in 1980 and kind of increase over the years, you could see more of his style come out, and you can really I, I just I I love his art. I find it to be very raw. I find it to be very charged, and you get something from his covers and his artwork that is much deeper than just showcasing the character and uh, putting him on a cover. Um, so that would be another one, but another one, I, I'd love to have more writers on. And that's something that I found to be very interesting on social media. It's, you know, Donnie Cates is very active, but I'd love to speak to more writers. It's easy. It's easier for, uh, artists to showcase their art or commissions that they're working on, but it's much harder for a writer to showcase what they're writing on or to talk about it. Um, because those mediums, it's a lot. They can't just like post a page on their Instagram and say, "Hey, here's page page five of something I'm working on." <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'd like to talk to more writers. I think that's something that uh, I feel the writers don't. Social media has made it harder for them to kind of showcase what they're doing and and speak more about it. Yeah, that's true. I've noticed that too. And as a former writer and comic editor myself, like I know how tough that is when you're working for a company and you're like, "Oh, I really want to show people." what I'm doing and they're like okay well wait till the art comes in <laughs> and you're like yeah oh okay wait till it's lettered it's like oh okay <laughs> so like I'd love to know why an art like why a writer sorry why a writer chose to take a character down this path during an arc or you know like walking through it so I know Stegman you I love Brian Stegman's podcast that he started with uh, and did those issues with or episodes with Donnie Cates mm-hmm because they went page for page from the early Venom comics. And you can understand how the writing and the art came together and how there is a much more cohesive uh, nature between the two. It's not just, here's the words, here's the art, put them together and let's go to print. They talk about everything, you know, what, should there be lightning here? Should we, you know, better than this and that? Or what, where are we going with it? And I think it's it like, Having Gorkum on, it's so easy because people can just watch and look at his art, but it's very hard to um, to be able to speak to, to writers because they're they don't they're not able to do it as easily as uh, artists, in my opinion. Sure, they well they don't have the added visual, right? And so it's like right. a, yeah, so like you know having Gorkin on, or even if you had Ryan Segman on, or or McFarlane on. Good thing about McFarlane is that he's both. You know, he's a writer and artist and a you know producer and a, a businessman and he's a lot of things so and don't sell yourself short uh, actually Todd McFarlane one thing he loves and this is a, something I used to tell people all the time when I lived in LA I go everybody in LA likes to eat and talk about themselves 
So, uh, so if you if you reach out to Todd um, and you know find a way to to you know where he can actually see your comment or see your message or something or you know go through the the contact at uh, Image website or McFarland Toys website, I'm sure if you try to go through one of those channels, even in the back of every issue of Spawn, he gives you an opportunity to win a contest where you can talk to him for 15 minutes on like a Skype call. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, well, that's so, a good point. so uh, he puts himself I'm from out LA there. And- and I understand, I understand that comment. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's how it was in LA. It's like, the, but uh, but no, Todd loves talking about uh, the projects he's working on. He's a very passionate dude, so never sell yourself short. He's one guy that I feel like if I reached out, I could probably it'll probably take a while, but I could probably get him. But I'm trying to save it for something big. So, um, but I would say if if that's your unicorn, you picked a good one because he he is more likely to jump on your show than a lot of the other people I've seen working in comics today. All right, hey Todd, if you're watching or listening or whatever, please. I, I tag you in every dang photo I post of Venom, which seems to be every day. So one of these days, I'm bound to get your attention. <laughs> For sure. Um, so and again, everyone, to check out Ryan's uh, Instagram page, I'm gonna put a link down below. His website, his YouTube channel. Ryan, first of all, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do this. And secondly, do you have any last words for anyone? Anything you want to say before we head out? Oh, uh, first. Thank you so much for having me on my first podcast. This was, this was a lot of fun. Um, and thank you for having a lot of questions for me. You know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these interviews I do, I focus on the other, uh, on the, on the people I'm interviewing. So I don't examine my own, you know, collecting stuff or anything, the questions that you ask me. So it's been really fun for me to have some introspection as I'm answering these. So thank you so much for, for even having me on. It's a, it's a true honor to um, be viewed as someone worthy of, of the time to be interviewed and also for people to listen to. So thank you guys all so very much. Uh, and, and you know, if anything that I can plug is what you just said, please check me out on Instagram, at Ryan Comic Guy, YouTube, Ryan Comic Guy. Um, this is something that I want to collect and connect. Those are, those are my two goals for this is to collect my comics that I love and to connect with everyone out here. So feel free to, to message me, DM me, write me in comments. I, I write back. I do everything I can because if you're taking time to write me, then I will take the time to write you back. It's, it's a mutual respect thing for me. Awesome. And I definitely, at some point, it'll probably be a little bit down the road, but at some point I want to have you on again and I want to just have a, a full on Ninja Turtle conversation with you. Deal. Deal. Uh, I'll bring the pizza. <laughs> Sweet. Cowabunga, dude. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you again, man. We'll catch you next time. Thank you. Have a good one. And everyone else out there, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.